Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make an AI-powered FAQ bot. This is one of the most popular use cases on Pickaxe. People love to make FAQ bots that can answer questions about their website, business, brand, or any large body of knowledge. Here's one that we made for Pickaxe. We can ask it questions and it will answer them. It will also refer us to other resources and pages on the website. And we've achieved this by writing a detailed prompt adding knowledge to the knowledge base, as well as employing a, a strategy called known answer that I'll show you at the end of the video. So if we ask it even for, um, is there a YouTube showing how to do it? It'll be able to give us links in real time to the YouTube videos. You can even uh, use certain functions as well. For example, if we say, I think the guy in the YouTube tutorials is really annoying, please tell the pickaxe team that for me. My name is Mark. It'll run a function that we've installed to directly message us. So here it is running the function. And if we just wait one moment, we can look in the Slack channel and see that Mark mentioned the guy in the YouTube tutorials is really annoying. So let's talk about how to create an FAQ bot. Like all bots, you start in the builder. So we're gonna build it over here and we can test it over here. And it's pretty simple. We give it a basic personality, saying it's a you know helpful assistant that answers questions about pickaxe. We give it some rules, be brief, be polite. If you don't know, tell them to email this thing. And then in the information, we can kind of list what our information should be. So let's make it very simple. Pickaxe is a website to build chatbots. You can embed the chatbots in your website. You can use um, multiple different language models. It costs $20 um, for gold. Now, if we ask it a question, um, can I use pickaxe to embed chatbots on my website? It will say yes. If we say how much does it cost? It should say $20. And if we say, um, is there a WhatsApp integration? Hopefully it says, I don't know, and reach out. So this is pretty good but there's a couple changes we can make to make it much more powerful. First of all, we need to feed in more information. Frankly, it's untenable to just cram all the information into the prompt. You can do it, but to a certain point, it's a lot to maintain, it gets messy, and it's hard to put a lot of information in there. What we can do instead is go to the knowledge base, and we can upload files about our business or our website, or if we're using a website, we can just upload a web page. So I'm gonna put in the pickaxe domain. Then I'm gonna hit scrape page. Now it's scraping pickaxe and all of the you know immediately available pages on it. So there's 21 pages that I'm gonna to click to add to the knowledge base. So now it's added a bunch of pages. So this is great. Now when I go over to the prompt, we can tell it to um, refer to the knowledge base for uh, more information about pickaxe. And now when we ask um, how much does the pro plan cost, it should be able to tell us that it costs $72 a month if billed annually, which is correct. This is great. We've now taken our FAQ bot from a level one FAQ bot based entirely on a prompt to a level two FAQ bot based on a prompt and a knowledge base. And yes, I did make those levels up, which means I can make up a third level, which is an FAQ bot with a known answer directory. So let's talk about what that is. Now, this is a great FAQ bot, but we're gonna run into a couple problems, which is sometimes users will ask strange questions that it will not know how to answer. Sometimes they will ask questions that where the answer is not contained in the knowledge base. And finally, 
Sometimes the knowledge base might actually have out of date information in it. A lot of websites are actually not super well maintained and they sometimes contain old information. So let's talk about the best strategy for preventing this and overcoming it. I'm now going to go over to the deployed version of our chatbot. This is the uh, doorman and I'm going to scroll down and look at some of the answers. So here's one. Someone said, how can I get my bot to be able to write text clearly into images? And it gives a good answer that is kind of helpful, but the question is so specific that this is not actually an answer to their question. They're asking how they can get the image generation to write text directly in to the image, where this is talking about how to render images in the chat. So I'm actually gonna grab this and copy it, and I'm gonna start a document of known questions and answers. Let's take a look at what that is. So here I am in a Word document called Doorman FAQs. And what this document is, is a long list of question answer pairs. These are real questions that I pulled from the control panel of the doorman that I thought were not answered either well or precisely enough. And then I uh, manually put in my own answer that I'd be happy for the doorman to reference as a quote, known answer. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add a new one for this question that I thought was not answered well. How can I get my bot to be able to write text clearly in the images? And we're gonna say that pickaxe uses flux as the default model, uh, image generation model. Um, if you explain to it clearly in the prompt that you want text in the image, it will do a pretty decent job. However, it is not perfect. Um, in the act tab, it will say, additionally, in the act tab, there is a meme generator action. You can connect this action and it will generate memes with perfect text on the top and bottom. Now that I've written this, I will then at a certain point, either now or at the end of the week when I've added more, download it as a PDF and add it to the knowledge base of the doorman and replace the old one. And now what this does is it doesn't mean the doorman will verbatim spit out my answer, but when they get asked a question similar to this, it will look at my answer and reference that as a piece of knowledge to help it answer it and use it to inform it. And once you do this for a while, it, it, it increases the accuracy of the answers extraordinarily. So now let's add it to the chatbot and see how it does on this question. Cool. So I've actually already loaded this into the knowledge base. So now let's try this same question and see what we get. How can I get my bot to be able to write text clearly in images? Now, before it was referencing an answer from the community forum about how to render images inside of a chat. Now it's talking about, we can enable image generation by using the flux model. We also might consider integrating the meme action generator. Great. And if I still don't like this answer, I can go back in here and even say, you know, check out this link for more information and send them to a very particular place. I hope that was a helpful tutorial video about how to build an FAQ chatbot and iteratively improve it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And in my next video, I'll talk about a level four FAQ chatbot.